Welcome to this tutorial, where we will be developing a web service for the X-Road using C-Sharp.net. Here is what we will cover. 1. Download the WSDL file. 2. Change the WSDL file so that it describes your web service. 3. Generate the C-Sharp interface. 4. Create a web service that implements the generated interface. 5. Test that the web service runs and look at the WSDL. 6. Deploy the Web Service to Internet Information Services, IIS. 7. Test the web service through the X-Road. First, let's download the template WSDL file. Open a web browser and navigate to the website as shown on the screen. Now, at the top grey area, click on the magnifying glass to enter the search term WSDL and hit enter. Here you can find a post that offers a template WSDL file for .NET along with some instructions on how to generate a c -sharp interface from it. Download the WSDL file to your PC. You can see as we take a look at the file contents that it describes a basic web service that provides a method that we can call and it will return a list of persons. We will be doing a different web service so we will need to change this file in order to describe a Hello World web service. Therefore, let's take a look at the next step, which is to edit the WSDL file so that it describes our Hello World web service. Although you can see me doing some cleanup in the top section of the file here, I will not be writing the file manually in this video, but you can see that I have already prepared a file that describes the service that I want to create. You can download this WSDL file along with the rest of the project and there'll be more details on this at the end of this video. An important thing to note is that you need to replace the producer name in the WSDL file as the producer name will be unique to your service. The producer name occurs four times in the file as shown here. The third step is to generate a C-sharp interface from the WSDL file. So let's do this now. For this step, we need to open a Visual Studio command prompt, which on my machine is located under Start, Visual Studio 2013, Visual Studio Tools, Developer command prompt for VS 2013. On your machine, it may differ as you may have a different version of Visual Studio installed. Now, with the developer command prompt open, we first change our working directory to the location where the WSDL.exe tool is located. The WSDL tool comes with the Windows Software Development Kit, which you can obtain for free from Microsoft Downloads on the web. You can see that on my machine, this SDK is located under Program Files x86, Microsoft SDKs, Windows, v7.0a, bin directory. Now I execute the wsdl.exe tool with the parameters shown. The language parameter is CS as we're generating a C-sharp file. The server interface parameter is the location of our WSDL file. Then we specify the location of the XSD schema file, which resides on xroad.eu. And finally, the output parameter specifies where I want to save the generated file. Please note that the tool will replace the generated file if it already exists, so you can see that I rename my current interface file as I have already generated it before. Also note that if your path of the .wsdl file or the .cs file contains any spaces, you will need to enclose the full paths of that file in double quotes. The wsdl.exe tool gives you information about whether the file generation was successful, and if not, it tells you what errors it encountered. As we have now generated our C-sharp interface file, we are ready to proceed to step 4. In step 4, we open Visual Studio and create a new project. I'm using .NET version 3.5, but more recent versions will work too. As we are using C-sharp, we use the template located under Visual C Sharp, Web, Visual Studio 2012, and we select the project ASP.NET Web Service Application. 
give the project a name and press the OK button. The first thing we need to do is delete the default web service that Visual Studio has created for us. Select the file service1.asmx in the Solution Explorer and either press delete on your keyboard or right click and select delete. Now we want to create a folder for our WSDL file. Right click on your project name in the Solution Explorer and select add new folder and type in the name of the folder WSDL. Then the WSDL file that we have prepared will be copied into this folder. To do this, right click on the folder and select Add Existing Item and locate the WSDL file of the Hello World service. Also, click on the file in the Solution Explorer and specify the build action of Content and the Copy to Output Directory property should be set to Copy Always. Next, we will add the interface file that we just generated in the previous step. Right-click on your project and select Add Existing Item and locate the interface file, in my case, the iHelloWorld.cs file. Now we need to do some editing in the interface file as it comes with some default attributes that must be removed. Search for w3.org and remove those lines that are returned. In my file, there are five occurrences which I remove. After removing these lines, we are ready to add the Hello World service. Right-click on the project and select Add – New Item. And in the Add New Item dialog, select the Web Service ASMX option. Give the web service a name and press Add. Now, remove the standard attributes for the class and replace it with XROAD specific attributes as shown. Make sure that the producer name is correct in the Web Service namespace attribute. Also, I press control period in order to insert a using statement in the start of the file to include the missing namespace imports. I remove the default method of the web service and then specify that the class should implement the iTest SOAP binding interface. This name is from the WSDL file, so yours may be different. Now we must implement all the methods and properties of the interface in the web service class code. We can get Visual Studio to help us implement the interface by right-clicking on the interface inheritance in the code and select Implement Interface. But instead of this default code, I've written most of the class code in advance. So therefore, I will copy this code to the class and only write the Hello World operation code now. First, I copy some standard getters and setters for my properties. Then I copy the code of the list methods and test system methods. I have used some code from the instruction material for these, and I also need to insert the necessary using statements to the code. Now let's write the Hello World method. First, I specify that we want to return a new Hello World response. This Hello World response consists of two messages, the request and the response. First, let's specify the request, which consists of an input name parameter, which I want to retrieve from the Hello World 1 parameter. Note that these may be different for your service if you have used other names. Then we instantiate the response and specify that the message content of the response should be hello, concatenated with the input name parameter, and then followed by the current date and time for the call. When this is done, we are ready to test our web service. For this step, just press the play button in the toolbar in Visual Studio which will open a browser window that navigates to our web service. The web service shows a link to the web service description file, WSDL file, which we can view in the browser window. After taking a look at the service description, we stop the debugging of our web service and now we will publish the web service to IIS. First, you can check that the project compiles, which would reveal any issues if present. Do this by right-clicking on the project and selecting the build option. After verifying that the project builds successfully, right-click again and select the Publish option. This will open a wizard window where we can select how to deploy the project. I will choose to deploy to a directory, so I press the Custom option and give the Publish profile a name. Then I select the Publish method, File System, 
and choose the directory that I want to publish to. In my case, I have already prepared a web application in the Internet Information Service Manager and that it will use this folder as the application path and that it will answer on port 82 on the local machine. Under the Publish option, I choose to delete all existing files prior to publish as I'm reusing this folder from another project. Now I choose Publish and the project is being built and stored in the specified location. Here I just verify that I can access the site that I published to and that it works as expected. The final step in this example is to make sure that the web service also works through the X-Road. First I open the security server administration of my security server and log in with the credentials specified when the security server was installed. I have already got my producer approved by the X-Road Center and it is therefore ready to use. If you haven't done this step yet, you first need to register your producer and send a certification request to the X-Road Service Center. After they have approved your certification request and generated a certificate, you can then load this certificate which enables you to use your producer name in X-Road. As shown earlier, my producer name was ktl-helloworld-v1 and we can see here that it has been activated because it is shown with black text. If it was not activated, it would appear red in the list. When I select the producer and press the adapter settings button, we can see that I have already configured the adapter server settings for this producer. I have specified that the web service runs on this IP address answering on port 82. I also have two URIs, one for the service and one for the WSDL. As I have just created and published a new web service to this location, I want to make sure that my operations have been refreshed in the security server. Therefore, I press Access Rights and hit the refresh button. Hereafter, I select a consumer and specify that the consumer 597570 should have access to use my Hello World service. Now, to test the service, I have downloaded SOAP UI software by SmartBear, which helps us test the service. I first create a new empty project and specify a name for it. Then I specify where the WSDL is to be found for my web service. The URL for the WSDL file through the security server is shown here, but you can also find it in the documentation. Just note that your producer name will be different in the URL. Now let's build a request to send to the Hello World service. Double click the Hello World operation and notice that the request URL defaults to the IIS location of the web service, but we instead want to call the service through XROAD, not directly to the IIS server. Therefore, we specify the consumer proxy URL here. Now I specify the arguments to send to XROAD. User ID, service, producer name, ID and the consumer. The ID and the user ID arguments are arguments that XROAD doesn't directly use, but the producer must be the name of your producer, the service argument must be the name of your web service, and the consumer must be a valid consumer who has access to invoke the service. Finally, I give a value to the input name parameter, which will tell my web service the name of the person to greet. Notice that nothing happened on my first attempt to invoke the service, due to the simple reason that I forgot the HTTP portion of the consumer proxy URL. Now after adding this portion of the URL, you can see that our Hello World service is running through XROAD. As you can see, it's not very difficult to get a simple service up and running through XROAD. This was just a simple introduction, and we would like to encourage you to experiment with development of other services with more complex objects or types. Feel free to download the sample project from the link provided in the description, and if you have questions, please let us know how we can help. Thank you for watching.